Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Monday. Welcome to Stock Market Today. Ali Corman, Justin Nielsen here with a breakdown of the action in today's session. It was not a great day for the market. We did see a bit of a rally into the close, but still some pretty heavy losses for the day, Justin, coming on the heels of an expectation breaker on Friday. Yeah, I mean, that was the that was the big thing is that this was just a follow up to the weakness that we saw on Friday. And you know, we did go to market under pressure uh, at the end of the day on Friday because of that action. So this was I, I can't say it wasn't completely unexpected, but at the same time, it is never fun when it happens. So we'll take a look at some different ways to handle this um, with Starbulk carriers, also NVIDIA and Microsoft. You know, um, how, how would you handle this in depending on how much you have in terms of gains on some of these stocks? Yes, yeah, some great examples there. Uh, we've been talking a lot about on IBD Live, sell rules that yeah. are so important, uh, you know, whether you are up on a stock or, you know, taking, taking profits or cutting losses. So we will be talking about some of those sell strategies there, but first let's take a look at the major indexes. Here is the NASDAQ composite finishing the day down 2.2%. We had the S and P 500 down 1.7%, the Dow down 1.8% and the Russell 2000, the hardest hit today down about 2.7% and volatility, of course, up uh, pretty significantly today. Yeah. And I mean, the, the big thing is, uh, as you mentioned, it, it's hard to see it here, but there was actually a rally into the close. This was uh, well off the bottoms. We were standing at um, well below 3% on the NASDAQ uh, composite at one point. So um, we could take a look at QQQ. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We could take a look at the intraday and you can kind of see, um, you know, see that rally off, off the bottom. So again, there's still, there was still a lot of destruction. I don't want to, you know, sugarcoat right. it. Um, and the fact that we gapped below that 50 day moving average line, that is an area that we were hoping to get some, you know, uh, to get some support, uh, before the NASDAQ was just hovering right there at the 21 day moving average line, really kind of seeming like it was getting support there. Uh, the S and P 500, um, you know, it was showing a little bit more weakness. And this was actually one of the reasons why we went to uptrend under pressure on Friday was because whereas the NASDAQ did hold below those lows um, of the last few days, uh, the S&P 500 closed below it and closed below its 50-day moving average line. Mm -hmm. So um, that also uh, took took a hit today. And as you mentioned, you know, the volatility was up. If you just take a look at 0VIX, um, that's the volatility index, also known as the fear index. This takes into account um, the implied volatility volatility of the S&P 500 by using the options market. And you can see that this was a big spike, you know, well over 30% um, at one point uh, on, on the VIX. Uh, so that does, again, suggest that higher levels of fear, a lot of implied volatility rise there as, um, you know, institutions tend to use uh, some volatility instruments to hedge and, you know, protect themselves using options to protect themselves uh, to uh, make sure that they don't take the big hit in, in their portfolios. So that's what we were seeing there. So overall, um, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about on Friday. You know, it comes down to you really need to look at your individual stocks, uh, make sure that if there's any sell signals that you're seeing in your individual stocks that you're acting accordingly. Um, and, you know, there were some kind of signs of topping action. We were seeing a lot of distribution, a lot of stalling days heading into the last couple of weeks um, while we did tighten up for quite a bit at the top there, um, what you usually expect is uh, that's got to resolve itself one way or another, right? If it tightens up and then moves up further, I mean, that can be constructive action, right? It, it's taking a pause. It's letting the moving averages catch up to it. But if it tightens up and then starts falling, then that looks more like stalling or churning, um, especially after you've had such a move like we, we've had for um, months and months here. So uh, this is starting to look like we could be in a little bit more trouble. And whereas before we were climbing that wall of worry, now I guess a lot of people are looking at the, the market just saying, hey, just give me a reason. And it's got plenty. It's got, you know, the China stuff that was happening with the real estate uh, company that may be, you know, being given the opportunity to fail. You've got the Fed meeting this week. Uh, you know, the two day meeting will be ending on Wednesday. So there's all the taper talk. Um, you know, there, there, there's plenty of reasons out there. You've got the infrastructure bill. Is that, you know, potentially in trouble as uh, some of the progress progressives and moderates in the Democratic Party uh, kind of squabble over whether or not, you know, how much is enough. So there's a lot that this market has to contend with.
Yeah, a lot going on. And for more details on IBD's up to the minute view on market conditions, make sure you read tonight's big picture article Absolutely. where we will be going in depth on what went down today and what investors can expect for the uh, following session. And we also get into the really nitty gritty details of the technical action every morning on IBD Live. So we had a very detailed discussion this morning about some of the technical signals that we are seeing. And I know we will continue that conversation tomorrow as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And now let's take a look at Star Bulk Carriers, SBLK, a rough day today, down 12%, finishing essentially at the lows for the day, Justin. And this comes just after a failed breakout of a cup with handle base late last week. Yeah. And so um, th this is a stock that I actually owned myself. I got this shortly after its last earnings report, um, you know, as it was bouncing back above the 50 day moving average line. And so I just want to kind of point out that, you know, depending on where you bought a stock, uh, it will definitely change how you react to uh, different different scenarios. So for me, I was I was selling into a strength on this stock. So as this was getting into the 24, 25 range, um, I, I did take some off. I peeled some off actually just a little bit before 24. There was that really strong day on a Friday. Yeah, right there. I peeled some off into that strength. That was a really, really strong day. And look, the stock went up even further. So um, now, then we had that breakout. So it was a cup with handle. It formed a pattern. We had a breakout, but it was a reversal on that day and lots of volume. If you looked at the volume beneath that, lots of volume behind it. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a warning sign right there. You know, you typically want to see a strong close when a stock is trying to break out. So you might have peeled off a little bit more there. Um, that's, that's what I did as well. Now, the next day, if you had been buying on that breakout, okay, the next day, that Friday, you would have hit your 8% stop. So this is one of the cardinal rules. We don't mess with that. So again, if you had been buying this earlier, if you had been, you know, if you bought this way back in November, yes, you can handle it differently. You're giving up profit. And yes, that's never pleasant, but it's much different than when you're giving up your capital, your initial position. And for anyone that had been buying off of this recent breakout, I think Friday was your last chance to get out because that was your 8% sell. Now, today's action, it was a close below the 50-day moving average, a gap down. If you had been buying this as it came back above the 50-day moving average line, now you've round tripped. And so this is the problem. Again, if you don't take some off into strength, then you're sitting with a, a potential of all of those gains uh, just leaving you. And now if you had that earlier position from November or something, you know, again, you're in a very different position, but there is still something to trade around a position where you can be selling some into strength and then maybe buying it as it comes back on a reversal. So there's a lot of different ways to handle it. But I think the main thing is, look, if you had bought this recently, and this is how you should look at a lot of your stocks, your recent buys, if you hit that 8%, you got to do something. You don't want to be sitting through, um, in this case, a 12% loss on top of your 8% loss, because that becomes very difficult to recover from. It does. Great lessons in this chart, Justin, all the way around. And now let's take a look at NVIDIA, NVDA, uh, one of the winners this year. We've had it on leaderboard for quite a long time. And going back two quarters ago, we commented on the breakout here out of this cup and even the lead up to earnings, an aggressive entry on the news of that stock split. Then right. uh, on the most recent quarterly report, we saw more strong action, a breakout of another cup with handle base. And now with the stock coming down to its 50 day line, what should investors be doing, Justin? Well, here again, it depends on where you got it. Uh, if you got it at that um, two earnings reports ago, as it was coming out of that uh, breakout of a base, um, then you know what, you're in a different position here. You know, this is one where you could afford to see if this gets supported its 50 day moving average line, uh, like it has before. Um, so you're, you're, you're not in too much trouble in this case. Now, if you got it in August, you know, there was that nice reversal. And by the way, that coincided with a reversal in the market itself. Mm -hmm. So that was a place where we were entering in Swing Trader. Now in Swing Trader, we're looking at short-term gains. So we were selling that into strength and, you know, we, we, we got out of that, you know, a, a couple weeks ago. Um, 
Now, if you bought this recently, then you were probably buying extended. You know, that's one of those where you were afraid this train was leaving without you and you decided to chase after it. And in that case, you're, you're underwater and you're looking at a loss. So um, the, 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 the rule here is don't chase stocks. Don't try and get them extended. If you had that other um, you know, off of the reversal of the 50 day moving average line or after its earnings report, this last one, then really you, you just round tripped your gain. So you're in a little bit more of a vulnerable position. Um, if you had it from that earlier entry, and, and again, you, you drew a great line there, Allie, um, the 50 day moving average line is right there at the top of that previous base. So this is an area where you really would like for it to get support. Now, if you bought it earlier um, as you know, two earnings reports ago, or even if you held through, uh, this is something that's been on leaderboard since April of 2020. So if we take a step back to the weekly chart, then that kind of helps put this in perspective of, look, you might be looking at some, some much larger gains and you may be able to give this some room, especially because NVIDIA has been one of those leaders that has has been able to prove itself over and over as having the ability to make a move. Now, it did have a, a nice long uh, time period where it was kind of going flat there, and that would have been frustrating if you held through that whole thing. Um, but I, I don't think that you're in trouble yet. The 10-week moving average line is providing support at this point. It is. So right now, it's basically right at the 10-week right. line. And usually we do more. wait yeah, usually we do wait for the end of the week. Again, if this is something that you've held on to for a while, and I do have a position on this myself, um, so I'm going to try my best to wait until the end of the week to see how it closes in relation to that 10 mm-hmm. moving average line. For that final sell, uh, right. investors wouldn't be wrong to trim today given the overall market conditions that we're seeing? Nothing wrong with trimming a little bit, um, especially if your, uh, your purchases were a little bit more recent. Uh, if it was coming out of that reversal in August, which I added there, you know, so what I was doing was I was trimming that last ad because, okay, I don't have, I don't have the cushion there, but I have my earlier shares that I bought. And so I'm still looking at that decision as having more cushion. Um, and so I just took off the most recent purchases. Mm-hmm. And now let's talk about how to handle a long-term leader like Microsoft. So we'll go ahead and stay on the weekly chart, at least for the moment. So Microsoft now 0.3% below its 10-week line, Justin. I'll flip on over to the daily so we can see the daily action down about 1.9%. And as of now, finding support at the 50-day. Right. And here again, if you had bought this recently and you didn't have any cushion, then that's that pretty much means that you were chasing this and you weren't buying out of a sound structure. Um, so you may have to just part ways with this one, um, you know, and, and your timing was off. Uh, at this point, here again, we are getting support at the 50-day moving average line. That's great. But with long-term leaders, um, we, we don't even really like buying breakouts on these because, again, uh, the, pr- the preference here is to be buying at pullbacks because that way it, it has its chance to kind of give you more cushion and, uh, Ideally, we'd like to be holding on to these to the 200-day moving average line or the 40-week moving average line if you're looking at a weekly chart. And you can see that the, the 200-day moving average line coincides with basically the, you know, the top of that last base um, you know, a, a while ago. So yeah, if you take that 260, kind of got, you know, go straight back there, yeah, you're pretty much right there at that base. And so we'd like, as a long-term leader, to at least give it that much room if this is something that you've been holding on to. Again, like Leaderboard has had this on since April of 2020. So with all of those gains. And look, this hasn't been a screamer. This has been one of those steady risers. That's what you typically see with the long-term leaders. It's one of those where you look back after months and months and you're like, holy cow, I can't believe this is up over a hundred percent or more in a lot of cases. So um, another thing we're going to be looking at, as you're pointing out, is that relative strength line. That relative strength line uptrend is still intact. So uh, again, this, this isn't doing anything wrong from a long-term leader standpoint, especially if you have that early entry. If you don't have an early entry and you're at risk of this turning into a loser for you, then you're going to have to handle this differently. But the one caveat I would say is, look, if a correction does come and if you have a lot of long-term leaders, you will take a bigger drawdown. So you just have to know, is that in your personality, be able to take that gut punch because it doesn't feel good when a lot of your stocks will be coming down. Because again, if it comes down to the 40 week moving average line, it very well could get support there, but that's a lot of 
that's a lot of money that you're going to be losing in the meantime, a lot of percentage gain that you're going to be giving up. And that's never fun. Yep. So Microsoft about 14% above the 40 week as of right now. And uh, it's interesting, Justin, because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. We can use history as a guide and our technical analysis as a guide and the rules uh, to keep us as safe as possible. But if we do see a correction, uh, something interesting is that we looked at two stocks that have been on leaderboard since April, 2020. So if you talk right. about timing, you know, always look ahead to the possibilities that could be if you have gotten beaten up uh, in recent days or this year, uh, there could be a great moment coming up in the future. So you don't want to, yeah. uh, you know, go crawl in your hole and uh, <laughs> and decide you're never going to come out. Losses. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many cliches that refer to, you know, it's always darkest before dawn and everything like that. And look, this correction, I mean, for people that haven't been in the market for very long, look, this is nothing. You know, I mean, it's we usually don't go so long without a more of a you know, correction here. We've only been correcting in the S&P 500 for about like 5% at, yeah, at the most lately. Um, a 10% correction, that's, that's normal action. You usually get a couple of those a year, you know, so this is not out of the ordinary. This is just part of, uh, part of the game. And as you said, the great thing about corrections is that's where the opportunities come from. A lot of these stocks, as you mentioned, April of 2020 is when we have, you know, we, we got them. That was right after a major correction, the coronavirus crash. So uh, with, with everything, there are opportunities. And so mm -hmm. you, you always want to be making sure that you protect your capital so that you can live to fight another day. That's right. And we're not predicting another coronavirus uh, crash-like event. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, that, that was yeah. something very unique, something that you don't see very frequently. But again, 10% corrections, that's normal and they don't feel good. You know, so you have to just kind of uh, react accordingly. And this is why selling some into strength is, is positive. Um, why we cut our losses very quickly. That's going to raise cash naturally for you. Um, and that just makes it so that you don't get as hurt. Mm -hmm. Some great words of wisdom. And just a reminder, check out the big picture article tonight for more yes. details on the market action today and tomorrow morning on IBD Live. We will be discussing more in real time. So check that out at investors.com slash IBD Live, where we will be joined by David Ryan, William Muniel Protege, longtime money manager, and Can Slim extraordinaire. So we'll see you there, investors.com slash IBD Live. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.